Today we're going to be comparing two major art brands today. These are two brands of coloured pencils, the Prismacolor and the Arteza pencils. And this is a highly requested video as well. So I really wanted to get this out there for you and give my opinions on these two brands side by side. We're going to be taking a look at the similarities between these two brands of pencils but also the differences as well because there are some noticeable differences and pros and cons to both of these pencils. So if you're a beginner and you're not really sure which pencils to invest in, I really hope this video will be helpful for you. I also just wanted to let you know that I have a brand new Skillshare class which you can get access to by clicking the link down below. You can also get a free trial period on Skillshare as well. And the class is called Working with Watercolours where we're going to be creating 15 different watercolour effects on Polaroids, postcards and bookmarks just using watercolours and a few basic materials. So if you want to join in with me and create some artwork with me then click the link below and the details are there. And if you are new to my channel please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn the notification bell on as well because it really helps my channel out and I upload videos here every single week. But anyway let's jump right in with today's video. The Prismacolor Premier Pro Pencils and the Arteza Expert Pencils are two pencil brands which are commonly used by not only professional artists but hobbyists and beginner artists as well. So I really wanted to compare these two pencils, give my personal thoughts and opinions on which pencil set I think is better. The first thing that we're going to be looking at is build quality because the better quality your pencils, the more durable they're going to be and the better use you can get out of them. I'll be comparing both the pencil sets, giving you my honest thoughts on the build quality of both and which pencils I think has the edge. Now on first appearances, these pencils do look very similar to each other. So you might be thinking, while well, they look almost identical, so they must perform the same way as each other. But that's not necessarily always the case. There are a couple of things that I definitely did want to point out between the two of them. So there are a couple of cons that I would mention about both the pencils. The first thing being that I did notice both of these pencils were off-centred. Now what this means is when the lead is off-centred it can result in breakages because as soon as you apply pencil pressure to the paper it can break the lead where it's fragile. The other thing that I noticed with these pencils is that neither of them had a protective barrel on the end of them. Now this is extremely important because if you don't have a barrel on the end of these pencils it doesn't protect the lead inside the casing. So if you accidentally drop these pencils it can shatter the lead inside the pencil. Now I personally believe that it is worse with the Prismacolor pencils and the main reason for this is because I have noticed that there are some variations of the Arteza pencils, for example the pencils in the tin, that you can buy with the wood barrel on the end of them, whereas there's no option to do this for the Prismacolors. This has in the past been a huge issue for me, particularly with Prismacolor pencils. Some issues that I've had is the wood casing being damaged, the lead shattering inside the wood casing, and also a lot of breakages with the pencil, even after just sharpening. Now these issues have definitely been a problem for me with the Prismacolor pencils, although I have also experienced a few breakages with my Arteza pencils as well. However, it is worth pointing out that the Arteza pencils which come in the tins do have a protective barrel on the end of them, but if you're buying from the, the cardboard tubes like I did, they don't. So it's always worth, in my opinion, just spending a little bit more money and getting that protective barrel on the end of them. Whereas there is no option to do this with Prismacolors. So let's have a look at creating some colour swatches. Now this is extremely important to do and I think the reason for this is because it lets you see there on paper what sort of colour range you can get from your pencils. So I always do this for any new pencils or any pencils that I don't have colour swatch charts on. This is actually one of the first times that I'm using Arteza pencils as well, so I thought it would be a really good idea to just create swatches for both the Prismacolors and the Arteza to compare them. Now with the Prismacolor pencils, they do lay down really well. They're very soft and creamy because they are a wax-based pencil. And I really do like the colour combinations, the pigmentations of the pencils as well. 
And I love Prismacolor pencils, particularly for creating portraits, because they have a really nice variation of skin tones. Now I'm using the set of 72 pencils, I believe, so it's not quite the largest set, but it's large enough to really be able to get the most from these pencils. There's a good variation of earthy tones, flesh tones and more vibrant tones in this set of pencils and you really don't need a lot of pencils anyway to be able to get the most from them. You can still buy a small set of Prismacolor pencils, mix colours together to stretch the colours as far as you can. Even with just 10 pencils you can make over 100 colours. Now although these pencils lay down really nicely, what I would say is that you can suffer from breakages like I've already mentioned. And the one thing that you can do to help with this is by using a certain type of sharpener. Now the one that I use is listed down below. Since using the sharpener, it is a helical sharpener, I have found that it's minimised my breakages. I hardly experience any breakages with Prismacolors now because of the way it sharpens my pencils. And that in general goes for any brand of pencil that I'm using. So what about the Arteza pencils? How do they compare to the Prismacolor pencils? Now I will be honest, this is one of the first times that I am testing these pencils out. I'd never really thought about buying Arteza because I honestly did think they looked so much like Prismacolors and I was expecting them to perform almost identically to them. There are a lot of similarities but there are also some differences as well. So first of all, their similarities are that they do lay very similarly to each other. They're quite creamy and buttery and you're going to get a lot of smooth results with these pencils. That is because they are wax based pencils so these pencils are going to be good particularly for things like portraits but also adult colouring books where you want to be creating quite a lot of soft bolder colouring. The main difference in my opinion between these two pencils is their colour range rather than the way that they lay down on the paper. What I would say is that personally for me, I feel that the Prismacolor pencils have the edge in terms of more flesh tones and earthy tones, but the Arteza has more of a pop of colour. So the Arteza pencils are really good for more vibrant pieces. Now in all fairness, I am just using a set of 48 of these pencils, whereas I have a larger set of the Prismacolor pencils, so you definitely would want to invest in a larger set of Arteza if you really want to maximise your palette. But these are good if you're really wanting to create a lot of vibrant tones. And I'm not saying that these pencils don't contain earthy and fleshy tones, it's just less of a variety in my opinion. So overall, they're pretty much on par with each other in terms of how they feel, just with the main differences being the colour range. So we've tried creating swatches on white paper, and I wanted to just test it on coloured paper, particularly toned paper and black paper. Now the Prismacolor pencils lay down really nicely on this paper. This is the Strathmore Tone Tan series. I really like the way that the colours are still really vibrant and there's still a lot of pigmentation there as well. I also feel that it's very easy to lay these pencils over the paper. The paper is a softer texture, so it's really great for creating softer details. The Arteza as well lays down really nicely on this paper, there's not really much of a difference between them, although I would say that the boldness of the Arteza is a little bit stronger for me than the Prismacolors, but I find that the more subtle tones lay down better with the Prismacolors on this paper than the Arteza. So what about black paper? We're just creating some swatches here and mixing some colours in together. And I really like the contrast between the black paper and the Prismacolor pencils. The same with the Arteza. Now as you can see, these tones here I feel are a little bit stronger than the Prismacolor pencils, but that's just mainly down to their pigmentation. But I do like how both pencils lay down on black paper, there's a real pop of colour. 
Layering is a really popular technique for coloured pencils and we really want to be using pencils that are going to create great layering. Layering is the fundamentals for coloured pencil. Now because Prismacolors are a wax based pencil, they lay down really well. They're a really soft core pencil which means you're going to get very buttery results. And it's also very easy to just glide over different colours over the top. You can see that variation there between the yellow into the orange and into the red. It's very easy to create that mix of colour. The same with the Arteza pencils. These pencils are very soft core, so again it's very easy to get an even distribution of colour onto the paper. These pencils work great again for layering. It's very easy to build up layers on top of each other and to mix colours in together as well. As you can see here, we're also going from a yellow into an orange and a red. I would say the results with the Arteza pencils are a little bit blotchier in my opinion than Prismacolors, so I would give the edge to Prismacolors for layering just slightly. So what about burnishing? Now if you're wanting to apply a lot of heavy pressure to your paper and get in those final layers and flatten the tooth of your paper, it's very important to be able to do this effectively. Now the Prismacolor pencils are good at doing this, but like I said, you may experience some breakages with them because the lead is off-centered. So just be careful, it's better to work more softly with Prismacolors and work on building your layers up first and then only blending as the final and last stage. You really want to make sure that the very last stage that you're doing with these pencils is the burnishing stage. So all of your building layers should be done up until this point. Again, the same rule applies with the Arteza pencils. I wouldn't really give an edge to either one of these pencils because I have noticed that both of these pencils do have an off-centered lead. So again, if you're applying too much pressure with these pencils, then what you might start to find is you're getting breakages. But I did find that I got more of an even coverage with the Prismacolors. I'm not entirely sure why. I did feel that the results with the Arteza pencils was a little bit more blotchy in terms of burnishing than Prismacolors, but they're pretty much on par with each other other than that. Now leading nicely on into blending, which is very similar to burnishing. Blending is where you're obviously wanting to flatten the tooth of the paper and get smooth blending results. So it's important that you really smooth these pencils down to the ability to do that. Now the Prismacolor pencils, again like I said, they do have that issue with the core of them, but in terms of the way that they do blend, they're a really nice pencil for blending because they're soft core. The more layers that you add as well, the more coating it puts down on the paper and this ultimately aids with blending. So on the whole, these pencils are great for blending, particularly with dry blending methods like the layering and burnishing or even using a dry blending pencil. Now the main issue that you get with the Prismacolor pencils because they are wax based is you do get a wax bloom but this is something that you're going to notice with the Arteza pencils as well. And that is because as the pencil hits the light you will see the pencil marks and residue glaring from the light of the paper. There's nothing really in it, in my opinion, between how these pencils blend. They're very, very similar and you're going to get very similar results. So again, with the Arteza pencils, I just did the same process of just building up my layers before I go in and apply a heavy pressure. I'm very careful with how I lay my pencils because I want to make sure that the blending process is done right at the very end. I want to make sure that I have enough pencil pigment down to aid with blending as well. But I do feel like you get a really nice even coverage and even distribution of colour and great results with both of your pencil brands. And like I said with the Prismacolor pencils, you will find that in general you're going to get better results with dry blending techniques and methods than wet blending techniques like with a solvent. 
Now in general, solvent works better when you're using it in combination with oil-based pencils and dry blending methods work better when using in combination with wax pencils. But it doesn't mean that you can't get great results with using pencils like Prismacolors and Arteza with a solvent. You still can, but obviously you've got to be very careful in the way that you do this so that you don't get blotchy results. It's really important when using pencils like Prismacolor pencils that you use the right type of paper. So you're not using a type of paper that is too soft because then the solvent won't absorb properly. You want to be using paper that has a bit of texture to it. Now this paper, for example like you see here, is way too soft. There's not enough texture to the paper so you're going to get a lot of blotchy results. The other thing that's very important to aid you with your blending with a solvent is to use enough pencil pigment and layers. This is because if there's not enough pencil down, you're going to get grainy results. This is exactly the same with the Arteza pencils. It's just using the right paper and also enough of the pencil pigment as well. You still can get really good results, as you can see here, but it's going to be generally a lot more grainier and blotchier than using oil pencils with a solvent. So again, there's not really any difference between the Prismacolor and Arteza pencils. Dry blending is better for use with pencils like Prismacolor and Arteza because it doesn't create as much residue, whereas with solvents it does. So I'm using this blending pencil here. This is one by Prismacolor, but I do use this in combination with my wax-based pencils. And it does a really good job at blending out the Prismacolor pencils. It also shaves off some time as well. So if you don't wanna be meticulously going in and creating all of that blending with the layering and burnishing technique, this is a way to really shave down that time and create blending a lot quicker. This is the same for the Arteza pencils and in terms of what results you're going to get, you're going to get very similar results. Dry blending methods are going to work really well with really any combination of wax based pencils that you have. The main thing to remember is to use a sharper pencil because when you have a sharper blending tool it's going to aid with the blending process than using blunter pencils. This is because you can really get into the fine grain of the paper and it aids with the blending process. Another great way to blend your pencils is actually by using a white pencil. And you want to use a white pencil because it's the lightest pencil of your set. So it's going to be a great blending aid and tool. But also a white pencil will be great for creating a lot of highlights and adding a lot more contrast into your drawing by creating that contrast of light and dark. So it's really important to me that when I'm using a pencil set that I have a very strong white pencil. A white pencil that is quite opaque and not translucent. I really do like the white pencil from both of these sets. The white pencil is very opaque, which means that I'm going to be able to get not only great highlights, but it's going to really aid with blending. I was really happy with both the results that I got from the Prismacolor and Arteza. I think that both the white pencils are strong. There are white pencils, in my opinion, that are better. One of the best white pencils that I use is the Faber-Castell Gold Faber white pencil. That is a really good white pencil to use. But in terms of these two pencils, they're not bad. I think that they're pretty average for what they are. And there's definitely been white pencils that are worse than these pencils. So what about sharpening and details? Now there's a couple of issues with both of these pencils and it really is relating to their build quality which I mentioned at the start of this video. Because number one, they're soft core, it is gonna be harder for you to sharpen these pencils, particularly if you are sharpening them with a handheld sharpener. Also with a handheld sharpener, you could be putting a lot of pressure on the pencil barrel when you're not necessarily meaning to but what can happen is it can create breakages. Now I use a helical sharpener which really helps with sharpening my pencil and it cuts back on how much pencil I'm wasting from the amount of breakages that I'm getting. 
These are the two pencil sharpeners that I use. It's the Swordfish Icon Sharpener and the Derwent Superpoint Manual Sharpener, which are both listed in the description. The same with the Arteza pencils, because they're softer core, it is, in gen it is generally harder to sharpen these pencils. It also means that because they're softer core, then the pencil will be going blunter quicker than an oil pencil where the pencil is uh, stronger lead. But it's not impossible to sharpen these pencils, and I think that you will find you're going to get better results with using a helical sharpener. Now because they are softer core it does also mean that unfortunately they're not going to retain their sharp point for long either so you will start to notice that you're going to start to get very thick and fuzzy lines quite quickly whereas with a pencil such as an oil based pencil they're going to be able to retain their sharp point for longer because it has a harder lead. So there are pencils that are better than the Prismacolor and Arteza for creating details and a lot more texture. It's just mainly because they're wax-based pencils, but also related to their build quality as well. And in terms of the way that these two pencils fare up, they're really identical in terms of this process. But it's not impossible to create fine textures. You're just gonna need to sharpen your pencils more and try and retain the point for longer by rotating your pencil that's going to help to keep those pencils sharper for longer. This is where we hit the main differences between these pencils, the costs and set. Now there's pros and cons to both. This is the Prismacolor pencils. The pro to these pencils is that you can buy them as open stock pencils, so individuals, and also as small sets going up to large sets. So you've really got a lot of options there for what pencils you can get. But the downside to these pencils is that they're a lot more expensive than the Arteza pencils, and the expense is quite noticeable. Now with the Arteza pencils, we almost have the complete opposite to the Prismacolor pencils. So these pencils are a lot cheaper than Prismacolor pencils and you can also get more for your money. So for example, you can get much larger sets at a lower cost than Prismacolors. But what I have found, and I could be wrong, if I'm wrong, please let me know, is that I cannot find individual pencils for the Arteza pencils and I also can't find small sets of them. I think the smallest set that I found of the Arteza pencils is the set of 36 or 48 but if I'm wrong please let me know in the comment section. So this is how we really break down the cost here. So there definitely is a difference in the price. I mean, for a set of 12 Prismacolor pencils, it's gonna cost you around $30 compared to a set of 48 Arteza pencils, which is only gonna cost you $20. Now again, obviously prices can change. It is only approximate and it may also be more expensive in your country for Arteza than it is in my country. So just be aware of that. But in general, Arteza pencils are a lot less money but there is less variety of them so now let's look at the light fast rating i do have the light fast rating chart here for the prismacolor pencils and i also have one for the arteza pencils so i'm going to give a breakdown of both the pencil sets so you can get an idea of where each pencils is in the category how many pencils there are in the very top category compared to the worst category now from light fast rating charts that I have read on both the Prismacolors and Arteza pencils, it does appear that the Arteza pencils is considerably better in terms of their overall light fast rating. This does mean that more of the Arteza pencils are going to last longer in natural museum lighting conditions than the Prismacolor pencils. And that is quite shocking to me, especially because of the price point. The Arteza pencils are a lot cheaper than the Prismacolors, so you would expect them to be more expensive, particularly when their light fast rating overall is better than Prismacolors. So which pencils are better? Again, this honestly is just my personal thoughts. You may feel very, very different to me and that is absolutely fine. 
I think that these pencils are very much on par with each other. There are some pros to the Prismacolors and there's some pros to using the Arteza pencils. It really is your personal preference. I know some people that don't actually like using Prismacolors and don't like using Arteza pencils. But I think if I had to choose one, I would give the edge to the Arteza pencils. And it mainly comes down to the cost and also the light fast charts, which does side with the Arteza pencils and is better in terms of them than the Prismacolors and that's really what it comes down to for me but you may feel differently on that. I really hope that this video did help you and that you enjoyed watching. If you did don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment down below as well. I really hope you enjoyed this and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys!